thankful for what He's done. Amen. For each and every one of us. Amen. If you have your Bibles, we'll go to Ezra, book of Ezra, chapter nine, nine uh, chapter nine, verse number nine, Ezra nine and nine. Book of Ezra. Amen. Ezra nine, verse number nine. Book of Ezra, chapter nine, verse number nine, and uh, read this one verse, and then we will, Amen. I'll read some more verses after Amen. We pray. Let you sit down. But Ezra, chapter nine, verse number nine, Amen. Ezra, Amen, and then uh, Amen. Ezra nine and nine. For we were bondmen, yet our God hath not forsaken us in our bondage, but hath extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia to give us a reviving, to set up the house of God and repair the desolations thereof, and to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. If you would just pray with me, Lord, I thank you for bringing us here. But I ask you to anoint me, Lord, for without your anointing I can do nothing, God. But we do know by that anointing you're able to speak, able to help, able to deal, God, to challenge, God, to convict. God, we thank you for all that you've done, God, for how you've not forsaken us, God. Amen. For you're always there, God. Help us not to ever forsake you, but always to be faithful to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 9, it says, Persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed. Psalms 37, 25, I have been young, but now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen. He says to uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and 5, Let your conversation be without covetous, and, uh, and be content with such things as you have. He, uh, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. We do know the man that he is not forsake. Amen. He will not forsake us. Amen. So we're just going to preach to you. I just want to preach today on a little bit on the Lord. Uh, the you know, man, that we are not forsaking. Amen. None of us have been forsaken. Amen. I do believe as I read this in Ezra 9 and 9. Amen. Some years ago there was a camp meeting I went to and they had this as their theme. The Lord really spoke to me through this and dealt with it. Amen. And helped me. Amen. In this verse here. Amen. And I, I, I preached out of this verse some in the past. Amen. But amen. Yesterday I was listening to my Bible as I was coming up here to the church. Amen. I beat somebody who was working on the sewer we're here. Amen. And uh, this verse came on and I heard it. Amen. And it just started uh, the, Amen. throughout the day. The Lord started dealing with me on this verse. Amen. Of God hath not forsaken us in our bondage. Amen. But amen. So I just started, I was thinking on it all day. So we're going to go over this today. Amen. About that, uh, we are not forsaken. Amen. The church is not forsaken. Amen. The Lord is never forsaken us. The Lord will never forsake us. The Bible tells us He'll never leave us nor forsake us, but we with us unto the end of the world, the Bible says in one place. We are not, and the Lord has not forsaken us, but He's proven Himself over and over again to be faithful. He made Christ Amen. The God of the Bible is always faithful to His Word, to His promises. He will never forsake you. Amen. He's always proven Himself over and over again. As we mentioned in Sunday school this morning about being faithful. His Word has established He is faithful. You can read all throughout His Word where He was faithful. And we can even testify, amen, ourselves of God's faithfulness that He is not ever forsaken us. Amen. Others may forsake you. Amen. Your own family may forsake you. Your family uh, families may forsake you. Amen. Professing believers may forsake you. Amen. Amen. People 
may forsake you. The people you thought was closest to you may forsake you. People may forsake you. Amen. That way people might have forsaken you that was in this church. Other Christians may amen or professing Christians might have forsaken you. People might have turned their back in you, stabbed you in the back. But we do know this, that God is always faithful and doesn't ever forsaken us. He has forsake us. Even, even when things seem terrible, Christ never forsakes us. He is always faithful to His Word. What His Word says He would do, He has always done. Christ has never shown uh, any, any one of us that He differs from anything that is ever found right here in the pages of this Word. He's faithful to save. He's not forsaken us when we call on Him for salvation. Every one of us, when we call as the Spirit drew us, as we call for salvation, He saved each and every one of us. He's been faithful to that. Amen. He's faithful to fill us with the Holy Ghost, as His Word said He would do. He's faithful to call us to do a work for Him, as His Word said He would do. He's faithful to bring us through whatever we're going through. God, Christ has not forsaken any one of us. But He's proven Himself over and over and over again to be faithful. Each and every one of us can uh, amen, testify today. If I ask each and every one of you, amen, to testify of the faithfulness of God, I know, because I know the character of God, what His Word said He was, and by experience as well, that He is, that he is faithful. Each and every one of us can share probably countless stories, truly more than we can share of Him never forsaking us, but being faithful to us. Every single time. I can, I can tell you that people have not always been faithful. People have forsaken me. People have forsaken me for stupid reasons. And I sometimes, amen, I, people might have done it, amen, to, to, uh, to my shame of things of my own doing. But I can, I can say, amen, but I can say this, that God hasn't forsaken me. Now, amen, we do know we can lose out on God, but amen, we can, we can forsake Him, but He doesn't forsake us. But amen, as we're going to talk about now, that we, amen, He has been faithful to us and not forsaken us. His Word said He would not leave us nor forsake us. Amen. But we must stay faithful and not forsake Him. Amen. The possibility is there for us to stay in Him and God is not forsaking us. Amen. We forfeit. Amen. Uh, we forfeit our salvation as we believe a man for, can forfeit his salvation. It's not so much lose it where God's not going to forsake us. We've forsaken Him. Amen. When we do something wrong, when we sin against God, it's, our, it's us forsaking Him. It's us be, not being faithful to Him. He's never been unfaithful to us. It's always our doing when we forsake Him. But we must be faithful unto Him. We must be faithful to what He has done, said to do. Amen. We do believe, as we talk, talked about some lately, and I've been studying about it, meditating about it, so I'm probably going to be talking about it some, but I do believe a man can amen, forfeit his salvation. I do believe a man can forsake God, but I do believe we can stay faithful unto God as He's been faithful faithful unto us. That is the command that we have to be faithful unto God. Just because someone may forsake us doesn't mean that we we must forsake Him. Just because things are going hard doesn't mean we ever have a reason to forsake Him. We have nothing but reasons to be faithful unto Him. He meant He's been he's proven Himself to keep His promises, to keep His words to each and every one of us. Amen. So we therefore should must not forsake Him. We must stay faithful unto Him and His Word. No matter how bad the situation, we are not forsaken. 
that He will not forsake us. The Bible tells us in Romans 8, now we do know that many people use these verses wrongly. Romans 8, 35 through verse 39, people use these verses wrongly. The one saved, always saved, try to use this as a proof text. We do know it absolutely is not a proof text for what saved, always saved. Amen. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword, as it is written, for our uh, for thy sake, he was killed all the day long. We are accounted to the sheep before the, the slaughter. They and all these things, we are more conquerors through him that loved us. I am persuaded, neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, no, nor cre- uh, no, any other creature shall separate us from the love of God, for uh, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We do see here that He's not going to forsake us through everything that we go through, and as Christians, we will face hardship. Each and every one of us has faced much hardship in our salvation. We're not going to, we're not going without any problems. As we read in the scripture of them that went through problems, we're not going to escape it. It rains on the just and unjust alike. Time and chance happens to us all, as the book of Ecclesiastes says. Every one of us will face struggles, but we are not forsaking in them struggles. Amen. We see, amen, uh, amen, uh, the, uh, we know that God has not forsaken us. Amen. In our trouble, He has not forsaken us. As I said, you will face trouble. In their time of trouble, whatever trouble it may be, whether it be financial, whether it be health, whether it be, amen, uh, problems with loved ones, whether it, whatever it may be, we know in our time of trouble, we're not forsaken. He is, David says, I read a while ago. Yeah, amen. I've, I've been young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor is see begging for bread. Christ is not going to forsake us. No matter, amen, how long I've walked with God, I've never, He's never forsaken me, and I've never seen Him forsake anyone, nor will I ever. He is faithful to what He said He would be. So we, man, in our time of trouble, do we give up? Do we, uh, do we throw in a towel? Do we give in to temptation? Absolutely not. We must stand strong and not forsake Him, for He has not forsaken us. The time of trouble is not a time to give up, but it's a time to push forward. Amen. Push harder. We must not. In our time of concern, each and every one of us had concern, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with concern. I don't believe we should be worried or be anxious for nothing, but amen, when we're concerned about certain situations, we, we must know that He has not forsaken us. Christ knows that concern Sir, amen. If we'll call out the Lord, him, he hears and answer prayers. We must know that we are not forsaking no matter the time of what we are going through. In our temptation, we know that we are not forsaken. Now, we do know temptation is not a sin. Giving in to temptation is a sin. Amen. It says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, There hath no temptation taken you but as such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. Amen. God is faithful no matter what we are going through in the time of temptation. He is faithful to be, uh, amen, He's faithful to us in that time to make a way of escape for us. He has proven Himself this over and over again, first of all, by His Word, and second of all, by experience. We must know that God is able, amen, and faithful to us. In the middle of temptation. No matter the temptation, we can overcome it by by the grace of God because He has made a way of escape for each and every one of us. Amen. Most will preach different than this. They will preach that God is able, amen, and faithful at every other time 
but this time. Amen. And God is faithful in our struggles, our trials. Amen. He's, he's faithful to us when we lose a loved one. He's faithful to us in our sickness. Amen. He's faithful to us when we have money in the bank and we don't. God is faithful in every situation and most would preach that. But most would not really believe that God is faithful in our time of temptation and not forsaken us. He just amen in our time of temptation. Most would believe that He would just give us to fall into temptation every single day. But the Word of God said, teaches, He has not forsaken us in our temptation that we go through. That we can overcome any temptation because He is faithful to His Word. That Him that a is a as I quoted in Sunday school, Him that a is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless. In His presence on that day. Amen. God is able. Amen. And faithful to us. No matter. Even if we're at a time of temptation. And our temptation. He has not forsaken us. But He has given us the ability. Through Him to stay strong. In persecution. Amen. He has not forsaken us. No matter the persecution we may go through. And I know. Amen. The persecution we suffer in America. Is very very minute. Amen. But I do believe if Christ tarries His coming, we will suffer much more persecution as we've been talking about. I do believe much more persecution is coming our way. We do see things escalating. Amen. We do see persecution more intimate is than we ever had before. It's amen, fastly approaching. The devil's fighting harder than he ever has before. We've seen a taste of it, just a little taste of what the government amen plans to do in all this COVID stuff, trying to shut down churches. We see much of trouble, amen, and persecution very nigh and at hand. Enemy seeks to destroy the church in any way. But even in the midst of the worst of persecution, we must know Christ is faithful to us every single time. No matter if you're standing there with a shotgun to your head telling you if you'll deny Jesus, amen, and you don't deny Him, and they pull that trigger, we must know Christ is faithful. And to bring us through that, no matter what. If Christ carries His coming, that might very well come to that. No matter if we're like Richard Warmbrand, when they're beating us, to amen, because we will not, amen, deny the Christ that died for us. Amen. If we're there and we're being that, we'll cry, amen. We'll, we can't stand in the midst of that, for Christ is faithful. We can be faithful because He is faithful. We must know that we are not forsaking no matter the struggles, whatever it may be, whether it's the amen from martyr, to amen to what amen to what amen to this the struggle you're having in your personal life. We must know that God is faithful to bring us through anything that we go through. He is faithful every single day. Amen. I could not tell you of a time where He was not faithful to me. Amen. In the midst of persecution, He's always been faithful to me. As I said, I... Amen. I'm as minute to what people are facing in China and Amen in North Korea or other places. Amen. Amen. What the persecution I face. Amen. Being punched in the back or hit in the back. Amen. Or spit on is very, very minute persecution compared to what other people are facing. But I want to tell you, he was faithful in that time when a sodomite spit on me. He was faithful when somebody hit me. He was faithful when I was threatened to be taken to jail. He's going to be faithful as well if I'm in prison for this gospel's sake. He's going to be faithful no matter what I may go through. He's never going to be anything but faithful unto me. He has not forsaken us. He's going to be faithful today. He was faithful in the past. He's going to be faithful today. He's going to be faithful tomorrow. And He's going to be faithful in eternity. He'll be faithful, not just to leave us here, for if we had hope in this world, in Christ in this world, only we'd be of all 
men most miserable. He's not going to leave us in a state that we're in forever. But He is a man, I do believe, that Christ will return to get His church, as His Word says to do. He's not forsaken us. Don't think, because I fight things, I'm forsaken. I'm going to tell you, amen, Christ will bring you through it. Amen. In your hardest times, amen, Christ is faithful. Christ is faithful. Well, it's easy to believe Christ is faithful when everything's going good. We're on top of the mountain. Amen. We're not fighting, not facing any battles. At that moment, it's easy to believe Christ is faithful. But in the struggle, amen, we must know there as well that Christ is faithful unto us. That He is able to to keep us. He's able to keep us from temptation. He's able to keep us in our struggle. He's able to keep us in persecution. He's able to keep us in our concerns. Amen. He's able to keep us through anything that we face, big or small. Christ is able and faithful unto His Word. Let us stand to our feet. Amen. Find us a place to pray this morning.